Clutter Director is the tool for deploying and managing enterprise Hadoop across cloud environments. In today's demo, we're going to walk through the dashboard that provides an aggregated view of all of your clusters across all of your environments, some of the filtering capabilities, as well as look at some of the easy management and monitoring that Clutter Director can provide. We will also use Clutter Director to spin up new clusters based on different workloads and elastically scale existing clusters while taking advantage of spot instance pricing. We will also go through a demonstration of reading and writing data from S3 using Hive. So let's go ahead and get started. First, you can see this is the main dashboard of Clutter Director. This gives you this aggregated view of all of your Clutter Manager instances and the related clusters. You can very easily see which clusters are related to which Clutter Manager grouping, get some of the service level information, as well as monitor across cloud environments. There's also easy filtering on the left side, which allows you to see all of the instances, the different environments, and allow you to filter based on your needs. For instance, we can click into this CM1 Clutter Manager instance to get all of the related information. We can see easily that all services are healthy here, and then go back to the immediate dashboard. Since Clutter Director supports multiple different cloud environments, you can also dig in on a per-environment basis. You can see available database servers that you might want Clutter Manager to connect to. You can view the different cloud templates available, and these can also be customized as needed. And you can also get additional details about the environment. So let's go back to this AWS reference environment, and we can see that we have a single cluster deployed. We can then click into this cluster to see the overall health. As you can see, everything is green here. All of the services are up and running, and it is running in good health. We can also see that there is one master node, get further information about the roles on these nodes, and we can see that there are three worker nodes. Here, we separate master and worker nodes because this allows you the flexibility to scale elastically for more compute resources. We can then also look into Clutter Manager, again, see that everything is green and in good health. And this connects us directly to Clutter Manager itself, where you can go and manage and monitor your cluster just as you would with any other cluster across any of your other environments. So as we can see, there's currently one cluster under this Clutter Manager, so let's go ahead and add a cluster. We can either create one from scratch or we can clone from existing cluster template. Let's go ahead and create this one from scratch. So we'll name this one Cluster2 Demo, and we're going to choose to deploy a Hadoop cluster with Spark running on Yarn. Now we can go and pick the exact instance templates for our master worker and gateway nodes. So here we'll select the CentOS 65 for all three of these. And then we can also adjust the number of instances to deploy as needed. You can see there's also the minimum instance count available that's needed to properly provision this cluster. So we'll click continue, and then we'll go ahead and spin up this cluster. You can see here that the cluster is currently bootstrapping. If we go back to the dashboard, you can also see that this cluster is in progress. While this is spinning up, we can actually go and modify our existing cluster. Let's actually grow the number of compute resources. So here, let's add a worker group, and we're going to call this workers spot because we'll be utilizing spot instances. Since this is just for compute, we'll add a data node as well as a node manager for Yarn. We'll select the instance template for spot instances. And here you can see that we've decided to use these spot instances and we are bidding $1.20, which is about 70% based on on-demand instances. We can also specify the number of additional worker nodes needed. We'll select three here. And then you can see the minimum instance count is zero. So in case these spot instances are taken away, the cluster will stay up. So now you can see this is spinning up and provisioning these new compute resources and is currently requesting these instances. When they're available, they will also be available to the cluster based on the pricing and bidding. So while we're bootstrapping both the modified cluster as well as the new cluster, let's actually use the existing cluster to run a Hive job on data in S3. So in S3, we see this data set, Nobels. 
This is a list of all of the Nobel Prizes and some information about the winners. With this data set, we actually want to see the number of Nobels won by country. So we'll go into Hue, and we're going to run a Hive query on this data. We're going to execute this query, and then we can see the Nobels table in the sidebar and the results with the US, UK, and Germany coming in with top results. So this is us reading data from this table that's being stored in S3 using Hive. So now we have a table that we read from. Using this, we're going to create a new table, Nobels by Country, and insert this data into this new table, in such writing a table to S3, also using Hive. So we'll go ahead and execute this query. We'll let it run for just a moment. And we can see that the Nobels by Country table is now in the sidebar. And when we go back to S3, we can see that this table is now available. So today we walked through an overview of Cloudera Director and how you can use Cloudera Director to get a single view into all of your clusters across multiple different environments. You can also use Cloudera Director to spin up new clusters, easily modify and scale existing clusters while taking advantage of spot pricing, and then we also showed how you can read and write data to and from S3. Cloudera Director is free to download and is now available at cloudera.com downloads.